Hi, I'm Deborah Atkinson, and you're watching Flipping 50 TV, the place to reset, tune up, and prepare for your second and better half with the vitality and the energy that you want. In every episode, I answer questions from women just like you and me about what we're struggling with most. And I share what to eat, how to move, and small daily flips that you can make so that you can get the best results in the least amount of time. And I'd love to hear your question. Send it to me at flipping50tv.com. And if I choose your question for the show, you get some juicy gifts I'm gonna tell you about at the end of this episode. If I can't choose your question, you get Muscles in Minutes. It's my guide to the best exercises full of over 40 illustrations and photographs of how to start, where to stop, and where you should be feeling so you can get the best results. Today's question comes from Tina who writes, I'm having several problems from arthritis, bursitis, and sciatica. I have pain and weakness in my left shoulder and lower back pain, particularly on my right side, and I've not worked out in years. I'm weary of what approach to take. When I've tried to work out in the past, even yoga, I end up hurting myself and having to do physical therapy for weeks to recover. Let's go to Chalk Talk and talk about some solutions for Tina. Tina, we're gonna talk about three things for you today. We're gonna go into the kitchen first and talk about Minute Maid so that we can use food as medicine for you to decrease inflammation and get you on the right track so that as we do the muscles in minutes and exercises that are gentle safe and help you with a stretch and with some strength at the same time to keep you in a balance as you go forward really slowly but really predictably you're going to be ready for those and last but not least i want to talk to you about stress so here's where you're at you're right on the bubble when i give somebody a scale from zero to ten and 10 is high on the stress scale. If you are at a seven or above, it's what my good friend Elizabeth Lombardo says is the zone where you don't want anything going into or coming out of your mouth. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. <laughs> so what we wanna do is realize that's kind of a red flag. When you're at a seven, our goal is to bring you back down to a six or a five. A meaningful life is gonna have some stress. It's not gonna go away. But when you start climbing, if you're at a seven, we don't want you to go or tip it to an eight or a nine. And it's collective, it's the emotional, it's the cognitive, it's the physical stress that you're feeling and all of it goes in the same box. Your body handles it all just the same. So it's really important to you, although you and I are gonna talk about Minute made things in the kitchen, and we're gonna talk about muscles, that you start to get a handle on what is it that's causing that stress? Where is it coming from? And how can you put some joy in your life to start feeling better and or remove some of those stressors if that's a possibility? So let's go head into the kitchen and talk about how to decrease some of that inflammation. Okay, this is gonna sound almost like a broken record, but for everybody here at home and for you, Tina, it's time to start dumping some of the coffee, all right? So when I asked what you have for breakfast and you reported coffee and coffee and coffee, that's just a lot of coffee. And in the morning, ideally, cortisol wakes us up and it's not just the stress hormone, it is the energy hormone. So it's there on our side to help us be more focused, more productive, and get a little bit more done with a little less effort than we do potentially in the afternoon. So what happens when you overdo coffee? It makes me suspicious that potentially you're waking up a little more groggy and you're needing that little kick to get going in the morning. So what I'd love for to happen is that you have that much more naturally. So we're gonna start by working little by little through all of those meals. So starting to maybe eliminate one of those cups of coffee that you might be doing or be thinking, we're gonna do two cups, cup down by 10 a.m. and that's it. And then if you need something else and it's really about the warmth and the soothing part of a comfort that you're holding in your hand, try warming up to some bone broth. 
that's going to add a little collagen that will actually help your gut as opposed to the coffee that's probably not. And it can be a little bit more filling. It's going to get you started with about 10 grams of protein. Kettle and Fire is my jam. It is so good and yes, there is a difference. So if you haven't tried it yet, there's a link that I'll put in the show notes that you can go and try it for something special from Flipping 50. So try those options and then let's talk smoothies. So I am gonna try to make you a smoothie convert because if you're not used to eating breakfast, starting with a liquid kind of a meal can be a little bit easier. And start with, start with half a smoothie for right now half of the liquid, but what you wanna make sure you're getting is all of the protein. So a lot of times someone will be overzealous and they'll put a lot of greens and a lot of berries and a lot of everything into their smoothie, but then they've got a smoothie that's about this tall and they can't finish it. It's really important that if you put one serving size of protein in it, that you have it all at one shot because you need that quota at breakfast at lunch and at dinner, and it's not gonna affect your body and your muscles and your lean tissue the same if you have it in sips spread out through the morning. So make, make it with a little less liquid so you can get it all in at the time it's really gonna help you, all right? So, and if you're drinking a little less coffee, you're probably gonna find that you actually do get a better appetite if that's the reason you're not eating breakfast now. Here's how that helps you. If you've had a good breakfast, in about three to four hours, you should start to notice a comfortable, yes, I could eat something. And when you're comfortable eating something, you're gonna be in much more control about what you eat. So make it easy to do the right thing. And a bagel is actually not the right thing. So even if it's whole grain, but for some of us, especially if it's whole grain, that's not necessarily your best friend. We need to get protein in again. We wanna get fiber and somewhere in that lunch meal, we need some vegetables. So I'm gonna whip up some vegetable soup. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a cream of broccoli soup, even without the cream. And if you make one batch, you're gonna have lunch for all week. Bringing a cup of that soup in addition to some source of protein with you and if you're really addicted to that bagel cut it in half save the other half for tomorrow and now you've got a much better lunch solution that'll help reach all of your goals because your evening meal you are doing great so stay right on track with that and here's the other alternative for lunch you cook twice that dinner meal and take leftovers to lunch the next day and you're covered so no more just a bagel you can keep it as small as you need it to just to let yourself get used to it but once you discover your energy level is higher your focus your concentration is better in the afternoon when you've eaten a little better and a little more you're going to love the way you feel tina with a lot of physical itises meaning you've got some inflammation it makes sense that you want to start slow and we would rather have you take one step forward than go two steps forward and one step back or worse. So it's really important that we go on the cautious side and err on the conservative side of things with all the choices that we make. Much better for you to finish a workout thinking, I think I could have done more than for you to be feeling like that was just right or I think I did too much. I might have done too much, all right? So the feedback you get always in 24 hours and even in 48 hours after exercise, and this goes for anybody, is always much more imperative than what you get immediately while you're in the moment. Because for any of us, endorphins can kick in, serotonin can kick in, and we can start feeling really good during exercise. It's never a good idea to do the feels like workout. Well, I felt good, so I kept going. That usually leads to injury. So I know you're wise and I know you're not gonna do that. Now, let's talk about cardio. We're not gonna get into cardio for you, but what I wanna do is emphasize how good an activity simply walking is. With the sciatica and with the issues that you've got with bursitis and things that are going on with your joints, 
Walking makes sense. If you're able to do that pain-free, just in your activities of daily living, doing more of it makes some sense. You can also do some bicycling. You could use the elliptical, but I would stick with bike with walking because it's very balanced one side to the other. You're swinging your arms, you're using your legs in a way that is very natural. So starting, you can either increase your walking distance by about two minutes a week, each week, so that gradually by the end of the month, you've done eight more minutes of walking, and yet you've done it in a way that your body has adapted to it very easily. So once you get to the point where you're doing a 40 or 45 minute walk, that may be as much time as you ever have to add, and that's okay. So 20, 30 minutes, pace it by what's your realistic time frame. Here's the other alternative. If you can find a pool, water exercise, if you can get in the depth between nipple and navel and walk on your own accord, so no buoys, no belts, just walking back and forth, forward and back, and then side to side. You can do a lot of interval training or just low level walking, but against the resistance of the water, you have 12 times the effort that you're gonna have if you're just walking on land. And that can change the exercise that you're getting, but in a very safe way, and take some pressure off of the joints as well. So try any of those, try all of those, and gradually ramp things up. So when you look at week one and look at week two, you don't wanna see an incredible jump in the number of minutes you exercise or the number of repetitions you did, either one. Okay, now let's focus on core exercise because your core is the center of it all and what will help you develop strength and stamina and stay a little safer. But doing core can be a trick if you've got some bursitis or you've got some sciatica going on. So I want you to err on the conservative side here too. I'm gonna show a significant side series of frontal and side, 10 of each when I get to doing a right or a left side and I'm gonna show 100 using a flat back with a Pilates borrowed exercise. So sometimes the 100 needs to be the 50 when you're just getting started, all right? So think about who you are, what you've done yesterday and last week, and start accordingly. We're gonna go through it in this order. We start with a flat back 100. So a lot of flat back or 100 exercises actually happen in a position like this. And that can be very stressful to somebody who's got sciatica or bursitis. So I'm gonna have you start here. I want you to tuck your chin in. We're gonna raise the head so that we're not bothering the neck at all. And if it did, I want you to come down and try it again. Tuck the chin in first. Think about raising the crown of your head up. And as long as you're up high enough where you're feeling the core, you're in the right place. You're gonna reach your hands out here. And what I want you to do is think about pushing down so that you have to hold still. You're gonna inhale and exhale. So you can inhale in sniffs for five and exhale in, in exhales or inhale smoothly and exhale smoothly. Inhale and out. In and out. Keep those arms firm, in and out. Inhale and out, tuck that chin in. In and out. In, two, three, four, five, and out. Two, three, four, five, one more. And out. And hold, release. So. If that was the first time you did it, a little tension in the neck is normal. When you put it down, it should go away immediately. <laughs> We're gonna go to a side leg series right here. So on your side, careful that you're not hitting the microphone and support your head and neck, all right? So as you do this side leg series, what I want you to do is to lift and push down. And we're gonna go with one leg and think about pushing it down. Lift and push. And I want you to think longer, get longer than when you started here. And down, lift up and push. And lift and push. Length through that leg and down. 
So this is a side leg series. You may start to feel it right here, but we're working really up here too. And don't worry about it, you'll feel it in a second. I want you to hold that side leg about hip level, not more, but turn your toe out and that bottom leg is gonna come up to meet it. So really important here that you're bringing your heels together, Dorothy, right? There's a no place like home. It's not your toes because they wouldn't have to go very far if we did toes. Heels up and down. It's a little bit of inner thigh as well and up. And all that's happening up here is you're bracing. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to lift that bottom leg up. And so if you're struggling, that's what it is. It's your core. It's not that your leg is not strong and down. Good. Now, Here's the tricky part, we're gonna lower down. Here's how this goes. Top leg comes up, bottom leg comes up, and they both come down. And I want you to imagine a $100 bill right now. Squeeze it and lower it to the floor. And if you drop it before you get there, it's mine. <laughs> and lift, and lift, squeeze and lower with care. Raise, and down. Raise up, and up, and lower down. Lift up and up and lower two more and up and down and one more now here's the big one you're going to raise both legs five times and right now if you can't do that tina day one do what you can do and if it's two that's okay two more one more and relax and bend your knees just regroup but we've got to go to the other side you knew that was coming Nice and long, protect the head and neck. Top leg comes up and the bottom leg pushes down. And I know that sounds silly, right? You're with gravity, how are you pushing down? But you can actually resist and think about pressing that leg to the floor and down. And if you want to, point on the way up, flex on the way down. A few details you may wanna leave out this time and that's okay. And down, you can point and flex or not and down and lift and press good make sure you're feeling like you're long and you're stretched like somebody's pulling your feet away from the crown of your head you're feeling long and lengthened through that core and torso last one and i want you to hold this leg up hip height the bottom leg comes up and two and three and one of your legs inevitably is going to feel stronger than the other up and down five four to go make sure you're using that front arm and two one more time come up now here's the combination top leg up bottom leg meets it squeeze them together and then lower down almost that you feel a pull here up and up and reach away from you lift up lift up and reach raise up raise up and reach down lift and lift and keep stretching lots of length through that core reach your hips away from your shoulders on the way down and lower lift and up and down lift up and up lower down raise up and up and down one more time both legs here we go five times or less you decide and two three four and five and release bend your knees a little just to take the pressure off your lower back we are next going to roll over so we're lying down on the belly and we're going to keep the head down raising opposite arms and legs okay so find length on your mat arms just extended out and above what i want you to do is to push your hips both into the mat you're going to tuck your chin in you're not actually going to drop your nose to the mat but you want length in the neck through the spine and then we're just going to do 10 alternating sides here we go Keep those hips down. Nice job. Glutes are tight.
almost there. Five, four, three, doesn't have to be high, two, and last one. And release, bring yourself back over to your side and find a ball. You can either use a small ball, just like mine, from the grocery store, the hardware store, or if you happen to have an exercise ball handy, you can also use that. So the difference is gonna be how wide are the legs opened up based on the ball that you've got. But the work is just the same. This is not a leg exercise. This is a core exercise. And no matter when somebody does this exercise, it's a core exercise. Hand again coming forward. This part's really important. So if I don't need my hand, I'm rolled back so much that I'm not focused on the core muscles I want. So if I use this hand and I need it, or I would do a face plant, I'm in the right spot, okay? So we're gonna go 10 and down and nine and eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And relax. Got to do equal time on the other side. Right between the ankles, ideally. Down on the side and rolling over. So you've got a need for that front hand. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And relax, and you can get rid of that ball. The very last one here, feet flat on the ground. And this one is not often thought of as a core exercise. But if we really define well core, it's from your knees to your shoulders. So it all has to work. Put your feet in so that they're right underneath your hip bones and your knees are right over them. You're gonna bridge up in a way that it's like a ski slope from your shoulders to your hips to your knees. You've got a straight line and then release back down. But when you come down here, I'm touching but I'm not releasing. So you're gonna lift and then come back down at the top, I want you to make sure that you're really lifting that tailbone and pointing it toward your knees. Raise up and come down in my hands, not doing any pressure at all through my arms or upper body. My neck is relaxed, shoulders easy. Lift and then come down. And now if you wanna make it a little more difficult, bring your feet in. The more narrow they are, the more you engage the core, you change things a little bit and you engage those inner thighs always a good thing and down be honest with yourself and check in you want to make sure that tailbone is really pointed toward your knees so we're lifting with power we're pausing at the top and then we're coming down so you're going to lift power hold it at the top and then slowly and lower down lift hold it right there and then lower down we're going to do two more lift and down. And with the core work you've done, the lengthening through the waist, you should really be able to feel that in here as well. And then lower and down. Last but not least. So really familiar to everybody is doing a plank, right? But if you've got some issues going on, I don't want you to start with your hands on the floor where there's a lot of weight on your shoulders and the rest of your body as well. So what I'd rather have you do is elevate. So you can either take your hands to a chair, an ottoman, the back of a couch, or even to a wall if you need a little bit more elevation. Here's what it's gonna look like for me on a box. So as I come back, I'm still maintaining a good plank position, pushing my heels back, making sure my shoulders are directly over my hands, not behind them, and making sure that my hips are even and right behind, so I'm in a straight line. If you could draw and connect the dots and see the crown of my head, my shoulders, my hips, my heels 
are all in a straight line. And you're just gonna hold that for what's comfortable and then bend your knees and come up and out of it. And that is just a good overall series together with walking or water walking to keep you balanced from your right and your left side and from your front and your back and gradually build up your strength. Tina, thanks so much for asking your question and anybody out there. If you've got trouble with back pain and you've got a prior injury, make sure that you get permission from your doctor and you've got a release or recommendations on what to do and what to avoid before you get started. Be smart. And now I'd love to hear from you. Is your question similar, medically related or something else entirely? Send it to me at flipping50tv.com. And if I choose your question for the show, you get a trio of full-size products from Anne Marie Skincare, plus exclusive access to the After 50 Formula for Women, my online course, and a copy of You Still Got It Girl, my book. Even if I can't choose your question for the show, you get muscles in minutes. It's got 20 exercises and over 40 illustrations of how to do them, where to feel it, and where you don't want to feel it. So head on over to flipping50tv.com and send me your question. Even if you've applied before, it's worth applying for the next season. And I'll see you on the flip side.